Good morning. Uh, this morning, the Old Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 through 4, and you can find it on page 638 in the Old Testament. The righteous reign of the coming king, but there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when div dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The uh, New Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. And you can find it on page 3 of the New Testament. This is about Jesus begins his ministry in Galilee. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Jesus calls his first disciples. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus ministers to crowds of people. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The epistle reading this morning is from uh, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 10 through 18, and it begins on page 166 in the, Old, in the New Testament. Divisions in the church. Now, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or, you were, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might be, not be emptied of its power. Christ, the power and wisdom of God. 
For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, empty me of me and fill me with you so that the words of my mouth are only yours spoken through me. And Lord, open the ears of the hearers here today that they may hear what it is you are calling on their hearts to take from your message into the world. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. A few days ago, my husband shared with me a really fun website called How Many of Me. What it does is it allows you to put your name in and discover how many other people in the U.S. share that same name. After he said there was only one other Kylie Vogel and two other Gavin Vogels, it got me thinking about how many choices parents have when they go to choose a name for their child. And when I was doing the sermon prep for this week, that thought came to mind when I was thinking about how many religious options there are out there these days. Think about it. According to most scholars, there's over 4,000 religious groups, and I'm not sure if this includes atheism, modernism, or postmodern ideologies that require adherence to dogmatic, religious-like tenets, or those sects of Christianity that stray far from the tenets of Christ, like the Moonies or the Westboro Baptists. With so many choices, it's easy to understand why many are confused and left wondering what is truth. In today's gospel reading, we witness Jesus calling his disciples to follow him, and he will make them fishers of people. This passage displays what it is like to follow Jesus. It summons us to ask ourselves some questions. It summons us to explain why we chose to follow Jesus and not many of those other options. Here in this passage, every person Jesus calls follows him. Simply because he says, follow me. At least that's all we're given in the text. They left immediately. So what could have possibly compelled them to drop everything they had and answer this call. Now, it's, they had been waiting their whole life. It's like they knew this voice was going to come to them one day, and they just dropped it and went. In St. Augustine's book, Confessions, he begins that first book with an opening prayer that says, Our hearts are restless until we rest in thee. These four men appear to have a worthy calling, a vocation of, of being fishermen. But apparently their hearts were restless, and Jesus knew that. And so Jesus said, follow me, and they dropped everything for a whole new identity in Jesus. The call to Christ means you have to leave certain things behind. It's accepting a life that will likely mean leaving all your former ways behind. Many people think it's like, oh, if I follow Jesus, everything's so nice and it's wonderful. But the reality is it's not always that way. Many people think if we do this, all will be well. But choosing to follow Jesus means leaving behind the things that we relied on, that we counted on, things that have defined us. And as such, following Jesus, our identity changes. We know that choosing to follow Christ changes things because it's evident in this passage. And although not explicitly expressed, these people, these disciples, are also leaving their families. They are leaving behind their vocation, their livelihood, with no idea 
of how to provide for themselves. In other words, they are giving up all their worldly constructed identity to follow Jesus. Knowing this, I have to wonder why they would choose to follow Jesus. In trying to figure this out with very little answers given to us in the text, I asked myself, why did I choose to follow Jesus? We don't know exactly why they chose, but we do know that the Spirit can work in many ways to pushing others to choose Jesus, and it's important to know why we chose Jesus in case we are asked by someone who has not chosen to follow Christ. So let me ask you, why did you choose to follow Jesus? We live in a time when there are thousands of voices calling us. We have to be certain as to why we are choosing Christ because it is in recognizing this that lays that solid foundation for growing in our ability to recognize the voices that are inconsistent with God's nature. Now let me give you an example of what I'm trying to get at here. There was a young man who attended a youth conference. And that evening the speaker was talking about God calling on your life. And that child after that sermon was so distraught and he went up to his leader and he said, I have got to speak to that speaker. So the leader said, he looked so distressed that he set it up and he called the speaker up and the speaker was happy to meet with him. And during that meeting, that young man shared that for some time, he had been hearing God's call for him to end his life. And that his life was better off dead, that the world would be better off without him. Now after several minutes of tears, the speaker prayed with and for that youth. And then he whispered into his ear that while he believed this boy was hearing voices, he was certain it was not God's voice. And the young man said, how can you be so sure? that speaker said because Psalm 139 says you have been fearfully and wonderfully made and in John Jesus says himself that I have come to bring you life and to bring it abundantly God sent Jesus so that you may have life now I believe you that you are hearing voices but it is definitely not God's voice in truly understanding why we have come to follow Christ, we can be able to discern what is truly a call from God and what is truly a call from competing voices. Understanding why you chose to follow Jesus is not easy, and it takes time to sift through all of those voices. Perhaps you're even unsure the reason that you're telling yourself is even correct. There's a pretty solid test, though, to know for sure. Ask yourself this question. What was your response when you chose to follow Jesus? Did your life change at all? In this passage, we are reminded that in responding to choosing Jesus should mean that we are taking action. These men dropped everything they had and followed Jesus to become fishers of human beings. When we choose to follow Jesus, we choose to drop all that we thought was important at the time and joined in something that was larger than ourselves, something that we can often not explain without the language of love. And a man by the name of Daryl Davis understood this language of love well and this idea of being called and a follower of Jesus. Daryl chose to follow Jesus and his life displays his response to that choice. Daryl is an African-American R&B singer who uses his gifts of love to have conversations with those who are lost and seemingly irredeemable. He is known for converting over 200 Klansmen, neo Nazis, and skinheads to renounce their former rays of radicalization and hatred. He did this by doing the unthinkable. 
He befriended them and showing them the love and truth of Jesus. He can be quoted saying, I didn't convert these people. I was the impetus, the conduit that led them in that direction. He knew about the competing voices around him as he grew up. In fact, even to this day, he is heavily criticized by his own family, friends, and community. But in choosing to follow Jesus, he found that what drives his faith is what also keeps those voices from deterring him from his true calling. The truth is that love will help lead others to hear that voice of truth that we spoke about in the children's sermon. His story is amazing. And I would encourage anyone to read his books, to listen to his numerous interviews, or to see his PBS documentary. What Daryl's life displays parallels that which we see in this passage with the disciples. Once we choose to follow Jesus, we are to let go of those former ways and respond with action. Today, we can be like Daryl, displaying love and being secure in our foundation in Jesus by becoming fishers of human beings. We can love on and offer purpose and meaning so that all people who are searching for Christ, even if they don't recognize it. Let me ask again one more time. Why did you choose to follow Jesus? And what is your response? If you're having trouble trying to figure out a response that's not unusual, so many, including us pastors, choose to follow Jesus and then forget about that response part, and they sort of chug along, and sometimes we even perhaps sadly fall away. When we talked about being called last week, we are talking about the response portion of our choice to follow Jesus. So what is it you feel God is calling you to do? Ask yourself what needs in the community have not been met. Are there spiritual needs, seeds that have been planted and they are in need of some watering in order to sprout? How can you respond to Jesus, who as the Bible tells us, brought the kingdom of heaven to earth. Let us remember that it is important for us to know why we chose to follow Jesus. I chose to follow Jesus because of people like Daryl Davis that show us Jesus' way, the way of truth, love, compassion, redemption, and purpose are far better than the worldly constructed ways of divisiveness, grievances, futility, warfare, dominance, oppression, and power. This wisdom given to us over 2,000 years ago, and despite the many competing voices, is indisputably what is needed more today than ever before. What more proof do you need that Jesus is Lord and Savior? Internalize why you leave behind the old way and choose to follow Christ. Respond by discerning God's call and pursue your purpose for the glorification of God. For this gives us that solid foundation that recognizes the voice of truth inside us as well as be able to share that truth with others. For the sake of the gospel and the sake of the world.